Stanford Invite this weekend, live on Flow Track, Friday and Saturday. As usual, the distance races getting a lot of attention. Gordon, let's dive in. Let's talk first about that women's 5,000. The women's 5,000 is going to be real good. We got top programs represented. Uh, Hilda Olomomoy is going to be there, fresh off a really impressive showing at the NCAA Indoor Championships. Taylor Rowe is on the entry list as well. So is Kayla McCabe. You've been following this meet a bunch of years. Some say about a decade. What what should people expect from from Stanford Invite? We know the fields are deep, but what sort of times would you expect to see um, in this? For many athletes, is the uh, their outdoor debut? Are you asking me uh, specifically about the women's five k or overall? Women, well, overall, just how is this meet viewed? And then, yeah, if you get into what sort of times do you think we can expect for the women's five? So a lot of times we view the meet as like, ooh, we're going to see some hot action. Mm -hmm. And when we're trying to promote people to watch it live on Flow Track, we tell everyone's going to break the collegiate record. They're going to run world records. It's going to be the greatest thing you've ever seen. But in reality, people just want to get top 48 marks in the West or East respective regions. Most of, right. them are, most of these athletes are going to be in the West region. So looking at typical, like last year's Stanford invite, you know, Kai Robinson ran 13.23, which is pretty impressive for a 5K. Yeah. Um, on the women's side... The fastest Stanford invite time was in like 1540s, I believe. Mm -hmm. So what happens is there are going to be some people who are like, just get a top 48 mark. Mm -hmm. You may get a select few who are like, screw it. Let's, Go for it. Let's see what happens. This is my chance. And then, but most people, some of the top athletes are going to pull a, you know, what Chesarek did a few years ago where, hey, just run within your control, save it for June. Yeah. Um, but you never know what people are going to do. We know that. The typical times where people are going to run fast is either Stanford, yeah, Brian Clay, which is in two weeks, and then Peyton Jordan. Mm -hmm. So one of those three, you're likely to get your fast one. It's just a matter of which one is it going to be. It's like a shuffling. It's like three-card Monte, yeah. a fast time. Stanford, Brian Clay, Peyton Jordan. Where, follow the queen. Where's the queen? Yeah. We don't know. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to watch all three races to follow the queen. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of athletes are entered in multiple events yeah. too, so we, we don't expect any 5K, 10K doubles to no. take place, but they're covering their bases. They're going to try to run in the event that is best suited for them at the moment. On the uh, on the men's side, that men's 10,000, if all these athletes get to the start line, Drew Bosley, Charles Hicks, Alex Mayer, Kai Robinson, Patrick Kiprop. I mean, it, it's it, it basically goes, NCAA it, cross country – Without Nico, yeah. Yeah, it goes even deeper than that if you dig into the start list. But those are just some of the headliners. Bosley, second in the 3K, third in the 5K indoors, third, third. in cross. Hicks, the cross country champion. Mayer, All American, of course. Kiprop made the uh, made the uh, indoor meet. Uh, Kai Robinson, you mentioned defending Stanford Invite champion in the five. He's in the ten. So the potential is there for a fast time to take place. And we've already seen Bosley run a five this year. So he's, he's ready to race. We know that for sure. Yeah, and he, wrote, he ran 1337. Then he said on Strava, like, he feels like he can do that pace back to back, which is, what is that? Okay. Equal? That'd be 2714, Gordon. Yeah. So he thinks he can run 2714. That'll get it done. That'll get you a qualifier. I think it'll get a qualifier. Is that the collegiate record? 2714. It's got to be, right? Uh, Sam Salingo might have run something. I don't know. Yeah, I'll look it up. Keep look going. it up. Uh, so it's also interesting. The 10K, you have this whole situation of you got to run a qualifier, then you got to run prelims, and you got to run NCAAs. And if you're trying to have a, a successful post-NCA summer, that's a lot of 10Ks to put under your belt. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to run a fast 10K, you got to choose wisely. You either kind of... You either decide, is this a year I try to run a fast 10K or is this a year I don't? And some athletes are like, no, this is this is a, this is a want to finish as high as I can at NCA's year or is this a I want to chase a fast PB? Because also, got to remember, some of these athletes want to try to get that world standard. The world standard is a lot harder this year yeah, yeah. than previous years. And a lot of international athletes like Charles Hicks will probably be like, hey, put myself in the mix, give myself a fast time while all the other pros are kind of going to Diamond League circuit route. Chalanga 2708. You nailed that one. And he was fast. That was 2708 in college. Especially that era, too. Yeah. Like, I feel like 2708 
today the, today is gonna be like oh yeah people that's what when you put it in the context i know bosley wasn't going full gas he was just trying to get a qualifier yeah. but still like slower than that. his split that's... but people are running 1330s that i've never heard of yeah. these days so i feel like do you think 27 is gonna get broken this year i think it could get i think I think five athletes could break 2708 if they tried. Yeah. I don't know if all five are, I think there's a chance zero of them try to break it, but the way people are running, there are people who ran 1410 last year and then are running 1335. Like, it's ridiculous. Well, so, Nur, 1306, he has a collegiate record. And that was just from last year. <laughs> I think, I think Nur's time could get broken. Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just, he took down a Henry Rono record, which for a lot of us thought, I mean, I know. What was um, – who got close? Well, actually, no one really got close, right? It's just hard to, to chase turn, fast yeah. distance times because the coaches are trying to prioritize not overworking you, trying to prepare you to have your best race at NCAAs, which is not going to be a fast time. Yeah. And it's going to be in the heat and all that stuff. So you don't know what they're going to do. Literally, Drew Bosley could go out there and run a boring 28-20. Yeah. Or he could go for it and try to run a sub-2730. Mm-hmm. We just don't know. Mm-hmm.